Today in the news, we got Intel rising up, Nvidia's next generation, and more. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. The company has been in a steady downfall in the desktop space. There's absolutely no questions about that. Ever since I'd like to say Zen Plus, their offerings became less and less interesting when compared to AMD. And in the last year, their stock prices have been going down steadily. A year ago, an Intel stock was worth $70 a piece, and now it hovers around $45. Ouch. But when building a PC, you don't look at the stock prices, you look at the performance and the value, and it looks like Rocket Lake S might at least hit one of the two. That's performance, or at least performance at 8 cores and less. A few months ago, the company released a press deck telling us that Rocket Lake would have double-digit performance increase when compared to Comet Lake S. We weren't sure what the double-digit performance boost actually was, but recently, a leaked Geekbench benchmark has surfaced giving us a better idea. Idea, and it's pretty good. When compared to the last generation 10700K, the new 8 core 11700K scores a whopping 34% faster in single core performance and an impressive 19% in multi core. Does that mean Intel will catch up to the Ryzen 7 5800X from AMD? Well, kinda. If we look at AMD's best single core performance, it would be on the 5950X with a turbo of 4.9 GHz. It gets a score of 16. The Rocket Lake S processor is 8% faster with a score of 1807. When compared to the 5800X, the Intel chip is only 8.6% faster in single core and about 3% faster in multi core. It's kind of insane that Intel still pulls off these kinds of numbers at their now aging 14 nanometer process. Hopefully, the new core architecture will allow for better power consumption, although I wouldn't put too much hope on that since it's rumored to still have a 125 watt TDP with similar boost properties to Comet Lake S. Once again, it looks great, but value will always make the decision for consumers. If they can price it right, this could take over AMD in the 8 core and less segment. As for availability, Rocket Lake is apparently entering mass production in January and would be available for purchase in mid-March. Thankfully, Intel manufactures those in-house, so if AMD has supply problems, Intel might be the only choice for a consumer for a while, or at least it might be more available. Moving on, let's talk NVIDIA. In the last video, we saw that NVIDIA is delaying the Hopper architecture in favor of a new one called Ada Lovelace. While the name was all we had, the rumor mill is finally starting to turn. This seems more like speculation rather than actual insider information, but it does come from a leaker that has been very accurate in the past, Copite 7 Kimi. According to him, the AD102 chip, which should be the highest end in the consumer market, would sport up to 18,432 CUDA cores. That's because unlike Ampere's GA102, AD102 could have 12 GPCs containing 6 TPCs with 12 SMs each. That is almost double the amount of GPCs compared to Ampere, which had 7, or at least for the GA102. Now, this is impressive, still a rumor, but impressive. But as we saw from AMD, more cores doesn't necessarily mean better performance. I hope Nvidia is also focused on the ADA Lovelace architecture, rather than just pushing as many FP32 cores. Also, with NVIDIA, it looks like we're re-re-re-confirming the 3080 Ti. Twitter leaker HXL went to the ASUS website and found a nice surprise. In the graphics support and services page of the website, ASUS had already listed its ROG Strix RTX 3080 Ti 20GB. Not only that, but just above it, we can see what most thought wasn't really a thing. An RTX 3060 with 12GB of VRAM. I really don't get it. Why does Nvidia give 4 extra gigabytes of VRAM to the 3060, but not the 3060 Ti? It's an odd choice, but it's not the first time we see this specific GPU, so it's probably going to come. Lastly, if you were lucky enough to get a Ryzen 5000 CPU, the best overclocking utility is coming very soon, and it has some insane features. The long-awaited Ryzen Clock Tuner version 2.0 is going to be available at the end of January. All the versions prior to this one were able to squeeze a lot of performance out of the 3000 series of Ryzen CPUs, giving us about 10% extra performance without having to do too much. If we look at the information available for the new 2.0 version, 
it's even better. Tested on a 5900X, One Usmus, the creator, was able to reduce the power consumption by 28%, all the while not losing an ounce of performance or 7.5% more performance without changing the power consumption. Now, of course, results will vary since this is based on the silicon quality of your specific sample. Have any of you guys tried it out on a Ryzen 3000 processor? If you have, let me know down below. In the next boot sequence, I will either try to save a laptop or show you my new no choice PC. And that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's story. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.